What is the dexterity on a Yeti? I, I, the, the Yeti ice skater. That's the one I'm trying to picture. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I'm going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons with the Dungeon Master Realm Table. But before we do that, what is the question? How do you use the Yeti in a fun, interesting, weird, strange, odd, bizarre way? How can you use it in a non-standard way to really sort of spice up your game? The good news is, I don't have to do that alone because I have some guests, and if you would like to introduce yourself first... Hi there, everybody. My name is Denny Dicely. I run the Dicely D&D YouTube channel, as well as the Speak Dicely podcast. I make uh, videos and podcasts about how to play D&D. Hey, folks. Wally DM here, and I have a YouTube channel that's focused on puzzles and traps for your game. Hey, everybody. My name's AJ, and I have a video archive of Dungeons & Dragons lore about monsters and locations, cosmology, that sort of thing. Okay, the Yeti is actually one of my favourite monsters. So, Denny, what have you got for us? Well, when it came to the Yeti, I'd... It, it, the Yeti is one that I haven't really put much thought into before. But when, when I was kind of getting inspired for it, I was like, when, when we look at the roots of the Yeti and, like, culture, it really is a creature of horror. And mm. I think that's how I would want to use it in my game. Kind of a never seen but always felt kind of presence say you've got your party is about to head into uh traveling through snowy terrain and they run into locals who say oh the yeti is out there and it lives in that domain and it smells the flesh miles off so i would like every night that they're out in that terrain i would have like terrifying roars off in the distance that sound desperately hungry and each night afterwards have those those noises be closer and closer until eventually they just stop one night. And it's like, what does that mean? And then just begin messing with my players in those kind of ways. Like, perhaps if they're traveling, there's movement in the trees. Or at night, there is the firelight reflects off of a pair of eyes of some incredibly tall entity just beyond the shadow light or the, the firelight. And if a blizzard strikes just the feeling of being immediately pursued but something just being beyond and just messing with them and then i would only have an attack once they got out of that terrain thinking that okay it stays there once they're in a grassland or some forests just beyond the the typical snowy terrain as they've heard it stays in that's when i'd have the yeti strike i like it yeah. that's sneaky that's sneaky yeah, yeah it and, that, like and that's what I feel like. Safe now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean that's that's what Yetis and Sasquatches have been like, right? They're just mm -hmm. elusive entities and in, in uh, cryptid lore and that kind of thing. So it's like, yeah, I would want it to just be beyond vision. It reminds me of something that <clears throat> I don't know if it was Josiah Dungeon Dad or AJ who mentioned it, but uh, that the the Yeti is almost invisible. It's, it, you know, mm -hmm. given its environment and so forth, it, it's essentially almost, almost magically invisible, dependent on how far away it is from you. Um, mm. So I really like that idea. It reminds me of Jaws, where, you know, you know the threat is there, but you never see the threat. And you just see the repercussions of everything. So I, I think that's a great idea. Mm. What about you, Wally? Okay, for me... I'm in the same boat as any. I've never really used a Yeti in my game before, so I did have to do a little bit of brushing up on the Yeti in the Monster Manual. And when I struggle for ideas, I always look to see what type of attacks or abilities they have and try to create something going off of that. And of course, immediately what caught my eye was the Abominable Yeti and the cone of cold that it can breathe and the chilling gaze that can freeze someone in their tracks, so to speak. So what I'm thinking is our adventurers are going to this desert village, this tiny desert village in search of an artifact or information or things like that. So they get there and during the day, the temperatures are scorching hot, uh, 100 degrees plus Fahrenheit, 38 degrees plus Celsius. And the center part of this village has a place called the barn. So they get invited, they go into this barn and when they go in there, 
it's nice. It's 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. They go up, they get a drink, and they uh, the, the drinks are chilled. They have ice cubes in them, things of that nature. But every hour on the hour, they hear this blast, this noise, and they look up and they see this hole in the side of the wall, and they just see this blast of cold, frigid air just filling the entire area. Well, it's going to be up to the players then as to what they do. Maybe they snoop around and investigate a little bit, but on the other side of that wall, the villagers have captured and kept a abominable yeti there that is keeping everything nice and icy for them. That is awesome. Too, too much? No, that's great. That immediately <laughs> me, that immediately makes me think of the the Bedeen people of the uh, the Anorak Desert and uh, the Forgotten Realms because they're right by some mountains and things like that. So, yeah, they'd do that for sure. I have this image in my my mind, and I I have to tell you what this image is. I see Icewind Dale or a snowy landscape, and there's an outdoor bar. You know, like you have an outdoor bar in a summery spring hot location. We've got an outdoor bar in a cold location. And who's at the bar as the bartender? Mate, it's it's the Yeti. the Yeti. It's the Yeti. Denny the Yeti? Can we go with <laughs> Denny the Yeti? I think we can. I was almost going to say Wally, but I think actually Denny the Yeti would be the guy to get your drinks from. So I'm going with that. Um, yeah. Thank you, um, Wally. I now have a new NPC for my, for my game. Thank you very much. How you doing? You want your drink chilled, right? That's the only way it comes. <laughs> make sure you tip your bartenders yeah <laughs> never trust a yeti taco um so <clears throat> on the idea of the yeti being a uh, a big fair, furry humanoid that it possibly misunderstood right uh a yeti bartender that's that's fantastic you know <laughs> they're wookies right so <laughs> They're mountain wookies. So uh, in their wild form, of course, their, their fur and stuff lends itself to being basically a natural ghillie, ghillie suit. They're ambush predators. That's why their name is so short. Yeti! It's, it's something that you yell out, like, you know. So the barbarians are aware of whenever they're going and hunting elk and things like that, they need to retrieve those kills as quickly as possible because the yeti may just be waiting for them to drop an elk and then steal the elk and then run for it. They know that they can't take on the uh, barbarians because the barbarians are going to hunt them down. But stealing a few kills every now and then, it's nature. The barbarians would respect that. That's what the yetis do. As long as they don't bother us, we'll occasionally lose an elk to them. They're also kind of... They've got a supernatural aspect to them. Um, with anything that sort of stays in a, an intense environment for a long period of time in the in fantasy worlds, they tend to they tend to uptake some of that. And I love the idea of um, riffing off Wally's idea: a yeti that's a desert folk. So they're the sand people. Um, they're they're they don't speak a normal sort of language. They they keep themselves wrapped up, you know. Uh, so you never really know what you're dealing with. But if you ever see yeah. If you ever see them without their wrappings, the Yeti, you know, it's like, oh, the horns on their head aren't like, you know, they're not tieflings or anything. They're actually Yeti. Yeah, that sort of idea. And the idea that, that they adapt to any environment, including urban environments. So you've got sewer Yetis, cave Yetis, urban sort of, you know, construction worker Yetis. <laughs> <laughs> They don't really want to talk to anybody. They just they just get their lunch, which is some sort of animal in a box. <laughs> you know, don't bother, don't bother the just don't don't bother the the demolition crew because they'll they'll take your arm off. Yeah. Also, there's something really fascinating about putting a yeti in a desert setting. Like, I mean, deserts get cold at night too. It's like, why don't we put a yeti in a desert? I, I can see the Yeti having to have a groomer, like, because of all the hair and stuff. Just like, oh, it's hot. I just need this haircut. <laughs> just goes in, like, every day just to get shaved back down. Then the five o'clock shadow comes back. Just like, <laughs> a Yeti in a suit. Just like. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, so my idea was pretty simple. Again, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use something I've already done before with the Yeti, since I've used the Yeti quite a few times and not in the way you might expect. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, I have assumed that all Yetis are experts at skiing and snowboarding. Um, and so I've decided that my particular Yeti 
um, and the Yeti in my area, there's a particular Yeti that I used in my campaign called Cyril. Cyril the Yeti is an expert snowboarder, I would say extreme sports expert. Uh, and he used to, on many occasions, go flying down the hill I'm past just picturing my a Yeti characters. with sunglasses on now and dreads and stuff, and it fits perfectly. That's exactly what he looked like. I've actually got a picture. I got my brother to draw a picture of Cyril and stuck it on my Patreon page. And nice. it looks smashing. So that is the character that I like the most. And I wanted to sort of extend that a little bit. And I, I kind of feel like if Cyril can be a really good snowboarder, I'm sure that there are other yetis who would use skis and certainly a, a snowboard. It's pretty simple a strap and a board and you're away right that they could have their own sort of um, winter olympics where they you know bobsledding skiing maybe some skating get a bit of uh, a frozen frozen lake Um, but of course snowboarding would be the main event Mm -hmm. so that is my idea you can borrow my idea Cyril is yours if you want him and you have jungle skaters like a like a tarzan (laughs) <laughs> what is the dexterity on a yeti I, I, the, the yeti ice skater that's the one i'm trying to picture well hmm. the, you, you picture it and you tell us what it looks like but uh-huh. till then um please let us know what you would do with the yeti down in the comments what strange fun interesting way would you use the yeti in your games not sort of outside of the box you know considering the standard stuff that we normally do and hey till next time Yeti smash the mic button. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, keep rolling those 20s or smash the like button. Um, Go check out everybody else who's here, please. It's a good thing to do. Okay. All right. (laughs) We got through that. Did we, though? (laughs) Did we? Uh this is really yeti, amazing, sno- yeti snowboarders oh my god <laughs> it's like it's only it's, it's on one ski what fun with monsters is my favorite segments they really are yeah <laughs> it's so much fun they are yeti rappers way. stand sideways well oh, get out of my way <laughs> <laughs> i used to i used to have cyril come to the rescue when the players got um messed up on a snowy mountain top on the side um, mm. Every once in a while, it was very, very brief, and it it wasn't it wasn't like oh we get to chat with him. And sometimes it was just uh, he, he slides right past and he just tosses them something that's useful. <laughs> and then, um, oh, oh, things like that. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. think of that snowboard have... as a giant blade. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, imagine <laughs> imagine snowboarding and there's an avalanche because I've done that mm. as well. Um, I had Cyril coming down the mountain, and the guys can the guys can see this this yeti in the distance um, um, skiing down or um, um, boarding down the, um, the the snowy slope, and he's he, he, it's it's yelling out. Of course, they can't understand what it's saying, and pointing up the hill to the avalanche that's following him, <laughs> trying to wave and get their attention. Uh, so, yeah. Meanwhile, here he comes. Why not have yetis? Because like, give them a burrowing ability. Uh, because they're they're cold specialists. They set oh. off avalanches on purpose to oh. swamp villages, and then they just pick off all the survivors under the snow. Yeah, and then it's oh, just that's... like a surfer on the top of the yeah. wave. You, you're just like you hear something in the distance. It's just... <laughs> they're yelling at this. They're they're thundering at the snow. Mm-hmm. That's oh. a good idea. That's so scary. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea that they they use it um, use the avalanche to ski ski down. You know, I'd give them a bit yeah. more speed, uh, make it a little bit more interesting. Otherwise, it's kind of too, too boring. It's like the streams dried up. Where's where we're getting our water supply? We'll have to go to the the source of the water to see what happened. It's the Yetis using their cone of coal to freeze it to get people to come. <laughs> Oh, oh. This is good. I mm. do have three things about the Yeti that I was surprised didn't get mentioned. Number one, no references to Yeti cups or anything or mugs, or whatever. If you're familiar with the brand Yeti, there's no references. Oh. No, they're no, they're yes. like uh, they're like insulated mugs that keep your uh, your cold drinks cold, your hot drinks hot for like 80 days. Um, there was no mention of uh, Jack Link's beef jerky. That might just be an American thing, but there's a commercial with a Sasquatch where uh, they they keep stealing beef jerky. 
And the third thing was the uh, the Christmas story. Uh, is it Rudolph the Abominable Snowman? Oh yeah, the don't need the yellow snow. And... Oh, <laughs> no, no, no yellow <laughs> snow. No, the Abominable Snowman in the old uh, Christmas classic where they where they uh, he puts the star on top. And, like, yeah, oh. and he has the friend who's the uh, the miner that's just like constantly licking his pickaxe, being like, "Yep, tastes like gold." <laughs> no, don't have those. Okay. No hablar like American. Oh. <laughs> me no not American either. either. Me have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys, it's so easy to forget that we're so far away. 